Journey into space. The BBC presents Jet Morgan in The World in Peril. former lunar controller as their prisoner, have escaped from asteroid 734 and, in a Martian long-distance space sphere, are heading back to the Red Planet. There they hope to make a landing near the Discovery and, with the aid of the Earth ship's radio, contact home and warn them of how the Martians intend to conquer the Earth by hypnotizing its inhabitants with the aid of television. The journey from the asteroid back to Mars took three days. The sphere was not followed, neither were there any Martians or conditioned Earthmen waiting to greet Jet and his crew. So Jet, taking Lemmy with him to operate the radio, lost no time in leaving the sphere and getting out to the Discovery. They decided to enter the ship by its main door, which, to Jet's surprise, was found to be open. Climb in the ladder now. Oh, this is just like coming home after a long, wet, dull holiday. Oh, blimey! Now what? You wait till you get up here and you'll see. Hubby. What is it, Jet? What's wrong? The inner door is open, too. The airlock, you mean? It's an air unlock now. Ah, oh, but that's impossible. One door must always be shut. The others can't open unless it is. Impossible yet. And both of them wide open, as large as life. Well, that puts paid to taking our suits off. I can still manipulate the radio. I could do that with boxing gloves on. Well, let's get into the cabin and see you do it. I'll lead the way this time. Up you go, then. Good grief. Not more trouble. Wait till you get up here and you'll see. What is it this time, Jet? Oh, blimey. The bailiffs have been. But for Pete's sake, what's going on over there? Is the radio out of action? Out of action, nothing. There's no radio here. What was that? In fact, there's very little of anything here. The whole place has been stripped. Equipment, bunks, lockers. There's nothing but bare walls. Everything's gone. How about the cargo hold? Have they cleared the stuff out of there too? The cargo hatch is wide open. I should think it's almost certain that they have, but we'll go in there and make sure. Come on, Lemmy. Yes, mate. Hello, Mitch. Well? Everything's gone. Land truck, food, oxygen cylinders, water. Even the cigarettes and the old microfilm library. Well, what do we do now? Well, do you think they ripped out all the gear from the wreck freighter too? I don't see why not. Oh, but everything was intact the last time we looked in, even though the wreck had been lying there for more than a year. Maybe they thought the stuff would be unserviceable. That freighter took a nasty bump. Still, the radio was working, after a fashion. Frank was using it. But on less than a quarter of its normal power, its signals could never reach Earth. Well, maybe it could if you repaired it. But I never got a chance to find out what was wrong with it. I didn't even go in there. Well, we'll go in now. If it's still there, you can look it over. Well, if you say so, I'm willing to try anything. Did you hear that, Doc? Yeah, but be careful. That freighter is at least half a mile away. We don't want you wandering too far from this ship. Then bring the ship nearer to the freighter. <laughs> I keep forgetting how maneuverable this thing is. Okay, Mitch. We'll take off, rise just a few feet, and move over to alongside the wreck of old freighter number two. Roger. Here we go. Hello, Doc. Hearing you. What's the news? Uh, has the gear been taken out of there as well? Uh, some of it, about 50%. Oh. Well, what have they left behind? Well, the faulty stuff, mostly. Anything that has even the most superficial damage, they haven't bothered with. Hmm, particular, aren't they? How about the radio? Is that there? Yes, and Lemmy's working on it now. You mean they didn't rip out the power packs? Only the main ones, the emergency packs, the storage batteries, they left behind. And how long will they last? Well, how about it, Lemmy? What hopes? And with half the gear ripped out, we've got no means of recharging them. Then we'll have to find some other way. Well, there's only one way I can think of. What's that? The two freighters we left in free orbit. What about them? Well, their radio should be working all right. But they are not strong enough to reach Earth either. Well, they would be if I coupled this job to one of them. We've got no power supply problem out there. That sphere would get us out into the same orbit as the freighter, wouldn't it? Of course it would. But, but how long would it take to disconnect this lot from here? Oh, well, not long. A couple of hours at the most. It'll be dark by then. Well, if I had help, I might even get it done before dark. Very well. I'll get Mitch and Frank over here to give you a hand. Well, I could do with three people. I can't spare three people. Oh. Two must stay in the sphere so long as the controller's in there. Well, then, we'll have to think ourselves lucky there's still some tools left in this place. We couldn't rip out that gear with our bare hands. Hello, Mitch. 
Yeah, Doc. Look, it's getting dark. Whether you've finished or not, you must come back now. Uh, we have finished. Lemmy and Frank have just lifted the main transmitter out of its bed, and we'll be over to the sphere with it in just a couple of minutes. Good. Oh, come on, Mitch. There's you nattering and me and Frank standing here like a couple of lemons. I'll be right with you, Lemmy. Doc, get ready to let us in. We're coming straight over. Right. Now, Lemmy, what do I do? Well, get down the ladder and get ready to receive this lot as we pass it down. And be careful with it. It's the only one we've got. Is it all secure now? Yes, Jack. So long as we don't accelerate too quickly, she'll come to no harm. Then stand by for takeoff. Climb to a thousand miles, Frank. That's the height the freighter should be. Climbing. As soon as we find them, we'll match their orbital speeds, draw up alongside, and enter number one. I'll we'll need plenty of gear from number two as well. well. We can transfer that while you're reassembling the transmitter. Let's hope it works when you're through. Yeah. Are you casting aspersions on my prowess as a radio engineer? No, Lemmy. But if it doesn't work, if we fail to contact Earth, we might as well give up our home planet as lost. Slowly, the great sphere rose from the Mare Australis into the deep mauve evening sky. From there, we took what was to be our final look at the discovery, for that was the last we ever saw of her, an empty hulk, completely stripped of all the electronic and mechanical gear that had taken men down on Earth years to design and months to install. Our course was a spiral one. As we rose, we also encircled the planet, gradually gathering momentum which would eventually place us in free orbit round Mars. We had been traveling about half an hour and were over the sunlit side of the planet, which slowly but surely rotated below us, when Mitch, who was at the sphere's main televiewer, sighted the two freighters. There they are, look. Just a couple of dots on the screen, hanging over the planet's limb. That's them, all right. Yeah, we're overtaking them pretty rapidly, too. I hope we won't overshoot. Oh, don't worry, there's little chance of that. Yeah, I reckon we should reach them in about 15 minutes. Line them up on the center of the screen. We'll fly to them with the aid of the automatic navigation unit. Okay, lining up now. Coming into center. Slowly does it, Frank. We're almost on their tails. 200 yards. 175, 150... Slowly. 125... Dead slow. 115... Stand by to cut motive power. 110, 105, 100... Close enough. Well, we made it. Now what? Well, we transfer to number one. What, all of us? Yeah. But how about the lunar controller? Wherever we go, he goes. Goodness knows what he'd get up to if we left him alone in this sphere. Meanwhile, we've no time to lose. We've already lost half the day's grace we set out with. If anybody is pursuing us from 734, they'll be here in about 12 hours. Yeah, that doesn't give us much time, does it? Now, get your suits on. Uh, Frank. Sir? Call the controller. Tell him to come down to the main deck and bring his suit with him. Yes, sir. And all be sure to bring a safety line. I don't want any of us to go drifting off into space at this day. Well, this ship doesn't seem to have been tampered with. That we'll find out. Is everybody over? No, Lemmy's just coming across now. Towing his precious transmitter. Everybody okay? Uh, right. right. Yeah. Well, let's open the main door and get inside. Well, so far, so good. Everything is just as we left it. Nobody's been in here. Frank, uh, Mitch, put the gear you brought down there. Right. Then go across to number two and bring over anything that Lemmy might need. Okay. Right, sir. And I'll certainly need plenty. The spare power packs in particular. Bring those first, will you, fellas? Right, Lemmy. Now, how about me? You stay here with us. I could help transfer equipment, too. I know my way about these freighters as well as you do. Thanks for the offer, but we'd rather you stayed here. If you really want to help, you can give Lemmy a hand. Pass him tools as he needs them. You still don't trust me, do you? No, I don't. And I don't intend to let you out of my sight at any time. Very well. If that's the way you want it. I do. So you can get your suit off and stow it away. You won't be needing it again for some hours. And hurry up, mate. I'm ready to start. Stay here, will you, Doc? Keep a general eye on things. Well, where are you going? 
Go into the holds to inspect the ship. Uh-huh. Switch on the televiewer and check that Frank and Mitch are okay. Right. Then have them transfer all remaining equipment from the other freighter to this, including food and fuel. Well, what's the idea of that? This freighter may be our only means of getting back to Earth, so we might as well have it well stocked. Right. I'll get the televiewer on as soon as I have my suit off. And switch in the intercom in case I want to talk to you from down below. Sure. Okay. Oh. oh. Get in, you... you... Uh, ah! Oh, that's it. Hey, you! That spanner. Let's have it. This one? That's it. Now, uh, hold that. Oh. Tar. Well, that's all right, then. Now, don't touch that other one, or you'll very likely knock yourself out. How much longer, Lemmy? It's ten hours now. Well, not long, Jet. I've had to disconnect some of the remote control circuits. Was that necessary? Well, I needed the wire. And what difference does it make? The Discovery won't be remote controlling anything anymore anyway. Did I do wrong? I don't care what you do, so long as you contact Earth before any Martian sphere, asteroid, or any other craft that might be trying to overtake us gets here. Time's running out fast. Well, just a couple of minutes, Jet, and I'll be turning around. Here, you, get hold of that. Hold it yourself. Well, you're a fine help, ain't you? It's quite harmless. Look. Oh, oh, blimey. We must have got a couple of wires crossed or something. Here. Now, wait a minute. Uh, input one to point four. Ah, oh, yes, there, there. Now we should be all right. Switch her on, Jet. See what happens. She's on. Now, the receiver. Receiver on. And they both seem very lively. Now, see what aerial current we can get out of the transmitter. Oh, bags. It seems like Bob is our uncle after all. Fleet control calling space fleet. Have lost contact hey. with you. Can Blimey, we've got us? something. It's Earth. Repeat. It's control calling us. Oh, I knew they wouldn't give up all that easily. Control well, reply to them. Give us a chance. I've got Have to tune the transmitter first. I'm not even Can sure that it works. Well, then hurry up and tune it. I'm doing it, and I... Well, that'll be Mitch and Frank back from the hold. Well, that's that. Every movable thing from number two has been transferred to here. Fuel, food, everything. Oh, I thought we'd never finish. Hey, what happens to number two if we do go back to Earth in this crate? We leave it behind. Why do we have to? Well, we have no choice, Frank. With the Discovery out of action, we can't control it. And there's only enough gear to modify one freighter, this one, for manual control. No, number two will have to stay. Well, it's not going to be very comfortable travelling back to Earth in here. No takeoff couches... Not even a bed to sleep on. Virtually no room at all. And we sleep on the floor. Hello, Earth. Space fleet calling. Repeat. Space fleet calling. Uh, sounds like Lemmy's trying out the transmitter. Well, let's get over there. No, Mitch. Jet wants you on the televiewer. Uh, very well. But let me know if Lemmy gets through. Yeah, you bet. Hello, Earth. Space fleet freighter number one calling. Picked up your call a couple of minutes ago. Can you hear us? Have most urgent and important message for you. We must establish contact. It's a matter of life or death. Over. How long before you're likely to get a reply? Well, if they answer immediately, they receive us. About eight minutes. Let's hope they do. Who's that on the televiewer? Oh, Mitch. He's just checking up on the position outside. Now, you keep your mind on your own job. And thanks for all you've done so far. Well, that's all right, mate. What else could I do? What the... Hey, Jet. Come and look at this. Coming. What is it? Look, there on the screen, see that group of stars? That cluster, you mean? Yeah. And what about it? Well, ten minutes ago, it was just a sort of hazy patch, but now it's resolving into separate star-like bodies. There must be dozens of them. They must be approaching us. Yes, of course, which means they can't be stars. Hello, freighter number one, control calling. That's control, they heard us. I'll be back in a minute, Mitch. Roger. Control calling, freighter number one. Have received your call, but very faintly, strength one. It is difficult to understand what you're saying. Could you repeat your message, please, and boost the power of your transmitter? Well, Lemmy, can you? No, Jet. I can't. It's working flat out. Then call them again. Repeat everything twice. And speak clearly and distinctly. Don't I always? Hello, Control. Hello, Control. Received your call, Strength 2. Strength 2. I am working at maximum strength. Repeat, maximum strength. Very about those objects on the screen. Yeah, they're getting bigger all the time. Isn't that so, Doc? It certainly is, Jet. That cluster has spread out quite a bit since Mitch called me over here. It seems to be made up of dozens of objects. The screen shows them merely as pinpoints. Well, that proves little. It shows the stars in the same way. Well, whatever they are, they're lying astern and heading in this direction. Yeah, it could be our pursuers. Maybe a whole fleet of spheres similar to the one we escaped in. There's only one person who'd know for sure. Hmm, the lunar controller. Yeah, hang on a moment. I'll bring him over. Well, what are they? Are they spheres? 
No. Asteroids. Struth! But there must be hundreds of them. There are hundreds of them. That's the Martian invasion fleet. And it's on its way at last. On its way to invade the Earth. <laughs> on their way. Yes, Captain Morgan. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. Maybe there's nothing we can do to stop their reaching Earth, but there might be plenty we can do to prevent their conquering it. And what if this ship is lying directly in their path? Oh, it won't be for long. We're encircling the red planet ourselves. Two and a half hours from now, we'll be on the other side of it. And five hours from now, you'll be back in this position. And those asteroids will be much closer. Are you suggesting they'll hit us? It's a thousand to one chance. Not if the speed of that asteroidal fleet has been so calculated that it will be in this precise spot at exactly the same time as we are. What? Hey, hey, Mitch. Yeah? Figure out the speed of approach of those asteroids. I want to know to the nearest minute when they'll reach this position. I also want to know what our new position will be at that time. Right. And Lemmy. Yeah? Have you heard from Earth yet? No, mate, not a Twitter. How long since you last called? Twelve minutes. We should have had a reply by now. Then call them again, and keep calling. Right. Hello, Earth. Space Fleet Freighter Number 1, calling Earth. Have not heard from you. Hello, Earth. Space Fleet Freighter Number One, cool enough. Have not heard from you. Which means that fleet of asteroids will be in the position you mentioned in 13 hours. But by then, we would have encircled the planet three times. And how close to the Martian fleet will we be? Slap in the middle of it. If the ship hasn't been crushed to pulp by collision with an asteroid by then. Do you think they really would collide with us? Well, that seems to be their intention. Well, then we must change our position, go into a closer orbit. They daren't go too near the planet. What's the fuel position, Midge? Well, if we use it to change orbital speed, we'll never have enough left to go back to Earth. If we ever intend to go. Well, that is the intention. But more important is getting the message about the invasion fleet through to control. Hello, Space Fleet. Hey, control listen. calling Space Fleet. That's control now. I've not heard from you for more than an hour. Your signal was very weak. Did you increase the power of your transmitter? If not, will you please do so? Oh, blimey. They're not hearing us at all now. So much for getting your message through. And the invasion fleet is getting nearer all the time. Well, there's no need to gloat over it, mate. I'm not gloating, merely stating the facts. Keep trying, Lemmy. Don't give up. No, chap. Hello, Earth. Space Fleet Freighter Number One, cool enough. If we use every scrap of fuel we have, Space what speed fleet would we reach? One, oh, well, they'll have to give me time to work it out. Oh, I don't want an exact you. figure, not at the moment. Well, roughly, I'd say 30,000. And what's the speed of approach of that fleet? Mm, slightly more, maybe, not much. What's on your mind, Jeff? We'll play for time. Mm -hmm. Use every bit of fuel to obtain maximum acceleration. Oh, with what object? With the object of staying ahead of that Martian fleet for as long as possible. It'll also put us on course for Earth. Oh, but they're bound to overtake us eventually. Oh, but it'll take some time. Days, in fact. Well... In which time we might establish contact with Earth and get the message through. And what happens when we get to Earth? We'll have no fuel to slow down. We'll be able to stop. Is that important when the fate of the whole world is at stake? No, no, I don't suppose it is. When do we reach a favourable position to fire the motors? Well, we could have done it a couple of hours back, but now we'll have to go around the planet once more. Three hours from now, should see a spot on. Very well, we'll get the ship ready. It'll be a risky business, Jet. With no takeoff couches and acceleration rate at maximum, anything might happen. Can you improvise some kind of couches for us? Well, I'll try. Everyone will have to lie on the floor, of course. Well, what if we inflate our suits, use them as air cushions? Yes, it might work, but they'll probably get damaged. Well, we still have the Martian suits. I'll see what I can do, but I'll have to rip out every piece of metal, the microphones, heat controls and so on. Won't do to have anybody lying on anything hard, no matter how small. Well, Frank can help you. Very well. I'll get him onto it right away. Say, Jet. Yeah? These asteroids, they're closer to the horizon. I'll be out of sight soon. Oh, they'll appear again, just as soon as we've encircled the planet once more. <laughs> they are just appearing over the limb now yeah they look a lot bigger this time well they should they're a lot closer well if you're still determined to make this final dash for earth i'd better carry out the routine checks on the motors okay jet the couches are ready will they be effective i hope so this will be the most uncomfortable time we've ever spent i only hope we're doing the right thing we're doing the only thing left to us oh, i suppose so now carry out your routine checks will you doc and let me have the result as soon as possible right meanwhile i'll get over to lemmy and give him his final instructions Oh, hello, mate. Those zombies in sight yet? Yes, they are. 
We'll be underway soon. Well, what happens to the radio once we're accelerating? I can't remote control this job as I could in the Discovery. This transmitter will still keep working while the motors are firing. Well, of course it will, why shouldn't it? But you don't expect me to stay here, do you? Or sink through the floor up to me knees? Of course not. Does that recorder work? Oh, I don't know. I haven't tried it. I don't see why it shouldn't. I don't see why it shouldn't. Yes, it works. Good. Now, take part of the tape and make it endless. Can you do that? Well, make a loop of it, you mean? Yeah. What for? I'll record the message we want to send. Then you'll set the tape so that it keeps repeating itself over and over again. Oh, yes. Feed it into the transmitter. Yeah. And leave it running the whole time the motors are active. Right. And no matter what happens to us, Earth may hear us and take the necessary action. Uh, how long will it take you to fix that up? Oh, about ten minutes. Now, get on with it right away. We haven't much more time than that anyway. Right. Here goes. Gentlemen, get onto your couches. Couches, he calls them. A park bench would be more comfortable. Is the radio fixed, Lemmy? Of course. That message is being pumped out at two-minute intervals. It'll keep going until we switch it off, or until the ship blows up. Well, if you'll all lie down, I'll come round and see that you're all comfortable. Did we get a bedtime story? Midge? Yeah? You'll stay by controls until the motors have been fired. How about you? I'll stay by the televiewer. As soon as our position is favourable, I'll give you the order to fire the motor. Then you get to your couches quickly. Stand by, Mitch. Standing by. Stabilizer. Contact. Those asteroids are so close now, they're beginning to look like solid objects. Well, that's what they are, aren't they? Everybody set? Okay, sir. I'm all right. Me too. And stand by for firing. Coming into center. 0 0.9 degrees. Well, let's hope we can reach sufficient speed to keep ahead of them. 0 0.8 degrees. Well, well, if we do, at least we'll get a look at the Earth again. Even if it's only to wave to it as we go by. 0 0.7 degrees. Now, they must be able to overtake us. As soon as they see us trying to get away from them, that's just what they'll do. 0 0.6 degrees. And we'll be completely hopeless then. 0 0.5. Don't talk so much, Lemmy. In no better position than a mouse the cat's playing with. 0 0.4. And don't move. Lie flat and keep still. I'm oh, just getting comfy, that's all. 0 0.3. 0 0.2, 0 0.1, contact! We're off. Lie down, Jet. Quick, while you've still got the chance. I'm okay. How about you, Mitch? I made it, Jet. Don't worry. Oh, thank goodness I don't have to get up again to turn the motor off. Just let her burn herself out down to the last drop of blood. What was that, Lemmy? No, nothing, Jet. Just talking to myself. Pressure's increasing. You're telling me I can't move? And you don't have to. Oh, Mother, it's getting painful. And save your breath. Oh, it's agony. Oh, it's like there's an elephant sitting on me chest. Oh, we've got a long way to go yet. Oh. A long way. Oh, don't remind me. Can't be far to go now. The fuel has almost begun. Can you see the gauges, Mitch? No, I can't. Oh, we seem to have been accelerating for hours. For days, you mean? Oh, won't she ever stop? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, it's over. The fuel's burnt out. Everybody okay? Yeah. When I get up from here, I'll bet I'll leave an impression in the floor you could take a plaster cast from. Mr. Evans... Evans! I don't think he'll reply for a while, Jet. He's out cold. I'll attend to him in a few minutes. I don't think I could get myself up off the floor for the moment if I tried. Everybody, stay where you are. Don't move for at least 15 minutes. And how about those zombies? Did we get away from them? I don't know, Lemmy. If we didn't, there's nothing we can do about it. We've played our last card. <laughs> I think we've lain here long enough. How about it, Doc? You seem to be moving around without any trouble. Okay, but, but take it easy. Get up slowly. Mitch, if you feel well enough, check the motor on our speed. Right, eh? Let me get to the radio. Turn off that quarter and try to pick up earth on the receiver. Yes, mate. Oh, Anything oh, wrong? Oh, I just feel giddy, that's all. I only hope what we went through was worth it. Well, that we'll find out when you get hold of earth. Yes, mate. Right away, mate. Frank, get the televiewer. I'll be over there in just a moment. Yes, sir. Now, Doc, how about the controller? We may need his help before long. Well, I'll do my best. He should come around soon. There's nothing seriously wrong with him that I can see. Hello, Space Fleet. Control calling Space Fleet. Jet, I've got him. Control calling freighter number one. Did they get our transmission? Repeat, control calling Space Fleet. 
I don't know, mate. Calling freighter number one. We still have not heard from you. Oh, Repeat, no. We have not heard from you. Please oh. increase your signal strength. Increase your signal strength. But I can't increase it. What do you want me to do? Burn out the transmitter altogether? All right, let me try again. But what's the point? There's every point. Each hour brings us a little nearer to Earth. And with it, a better chance of establishing contact. We must establish contact. Yes, mate. Uh, I'm sorry if I blew me top, but I don't feel so good. I've got a shocking headache, like I've been run over by a steamroller. Yeah, we all feel the same way. But we've got to carry on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be better later, I expect. Hello, Earth. Space Fleet Freighter Number One, calling Earth. Receiving you strength to... Well, that's about the quickest inspection I ever did. Well, we used up every scrap of fuel. We're adrift now with absolutely no control over the ship. He'll just keep going forever. That's no more than we expected. How about course? Oh, we're heading in the right direction, but going too fast. We'll reach a point in the Earth's orbit, all right, but two or three weeks before the Earth gets there. Unless we can slow down. What with? Well, that's what I said. We'll just go fitting around the solar system forever. We've sacrificed ourselves to certain death with a ship adrift in space for our tomb. All hope isn't gone yet, Mitch. And what hope is there? If we can save the Earth, maybe the Earth can save us. Why, well, has Lemmy contacted them? No, but he will. I know he yeah, will. but before that Martian fleet overtakes us, and will it overtake I us? I was about to find out. you better come over to the teleview and see for yourself. How's it going, Frank? Oh, they're definitely closer, Jet, but not nearly as close as they would have been hadn't we fired the motors. Well, that's something. they better take a check on their distance from us. Switch on the radar, Frank. Radar on. As soon as she warms up, we'll figure out exactly how long we can hope to stay ahead of those asteroids. My calculations, it'll be a week before they ever take us. By that time, we shall be five million miles nearer to Earth. My calculations agree with Mitch's. We've little over seven days in which to establish contact with control. Well, don't look at me. Can I help it if control go near us? I'm doing my best. We all realize that, Lemmy, and it's thanks to you we've got this far. Now at least we have a chance to contact Earth. Jet! Hello, what's up with Frank? Come over here, quickly. Well, what's the trouble? Well, those asteroids, they've increased speed. What? Yes, sir, they're closing in on us very rapidly. It must have increased their speed by at least 25%. Check it for yourself. There's no need to. I can tell they're closer by the size of the images on the screen. Yeah, they mean to overtake us, all right. And they'll be on us in less than a couple of days. If they go on increasing, it'll only be a matter of hours. Oh, blimey. Hello, Earth. Space fleet calling Earth. Can you hear me? A most important and urgent message for you. If you love me, answer me call. Please answer me call. That was episode 17 of Journey into Space. Taking part in this recording were Andrew Foles as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and Don Sharp as Mitch. Other parts were played by David Jacobs and Alan Tilton. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Tilson. <laughs>